Hi everyone, this is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University and this is the introduction for uh, designers in drawing and uh, we're going to do a little uh, overview of the next uh, category actually in the class which is the cube section and I already have pretty much two more already introductions from past years. Um, I'm doing one more because this semester I'm, I'm actually um, giving the option of, to people to do uh, slightly less or more complex designs, uh, given a more uh, dense grid or a grid with fewer um, or, 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 or more uh, squares. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go through the steps and um, the idea, actually, let me just show real quick what the goal is, and even though this is already part of the, um, the more complex section perhaps, um, this is the idea. So we're going to split a cube into two parts and they're gonna be exactly the same, okay? In every, in every respect, in the sense that this, I could take this piece and, and put it inside that kind of like Terminator-like, you know, when you go inside another body. Um, so, but this, as I said, is already a little more complex than the one I'm gonna mostly focus on today. Um, but the principle is the same. The principle is that we're gonna have a grid on one side of the face. We're gonna determine a section that sections it in two parts. Um, one part can be smaller than the other. And then we're gonna move that section around in such a way that once we're done, the outside is gonna be split exactly into two equal parts and also the inside, meaning we have to build the inside uh, and we have to determine what those, what those are, what those pieces are. Um, okay, so the first assignment, um, and actually I'm gonna use this semester's numbers so that it's a little more clear. So um, this would be number 16 would be the very first exercise. Um, and that will be simply doing some sketches of what your, um, your section may be, okay? I'll have a printout of these so you can draw directly on that, but you, you could also sketch them by hand. Um, so again, in the past, I've used a grid that's four by four, uh, four inches by four inches, split in half and then split in half again. Um, and the rules, we have some rules, otherwise there's like infinite combinations. Uh, one, the first rule for this four by four is that you start in the middle on the left side and then you go anywhere at the end here with maybe a couple or maybe three segments. So maybe perhaps I do something like, um, let's see, maybe something like that. Okay. And we'll see why we wanna start in the middle in a second, okay? Now for this exercise, for the, for the students who want to do the simpler grid, uh, we're just gonna do a two by two grid. Uh, it's still four inches, right? But um, it's just four quadrants, okay? And the very, very first simplest rule would be that um, if we draw the diagonals here as well, one rule could be, and this would be the simplest one and, and one that I'm gonna show, um, it's gonna, it's gonna be based on, it's gonna be using one of these rules. So if we still start in the middle, okay? And then we just use the lines that exist, okay? So basically these diagonals and these medians, okay? So what I would do then is, Once I have my grid, I, if I start here, I have no choice, right? Because I have to go and let's just say we're not using the edges either. So from here, I have no choice, but I have to go there, okay? And now I have lots of choices, but um, 
I would say again, the simplest would be, it's either one, two or three. Now, this is very simple. So what happens is if I go to one, that's the same as going to three. Eventually you'll see why, right? Because it's symmetric. If I go to two, that's not very much fun because it just cuts the cube in half. Um, so this very first simple rule could be changed, but it could also be like this. And again, that's the example that I'm gonna show in a moment where I, where I cut it out. Um, like, uh, yeah, like that. Oops. Why can't I find one now that is, yeah, like that. Okay. So I went, I went to the center and then I went to the top right. Okay. And I'll show you how to make these pieces. Um, so not too many choices there, but what if we decided to actually go somewhere else besides one, two, and three, right? So that could be another one. And you could, you could try to add only one rule at a time. So we could keep the rule that we start here, okay? And, but now we can go, once we go to the middle, we could go there, we could go there, we could go there, we could go there. So let's just call this one, two, three, four. Now, you will see that five, six, and seven are probably already here. So if I went here, that's the same as three. If I went there, that's the same as six. And if I went there, that's the same as seven, right? But that's okay. So that could be one option. I mean, there could also be this option, right? You just go there and you go there and that's your section. So we have one part and we have another part, okay? Um, it looks very simple, but you'd be surprised what happens when you actually uh, figure out the inside. So, so again, for these, um, the numbers in the, in, the, uh, in the list, these are the ones that don't have the A. So the ones that have the A are the ones that are a little more elaborate because they have a four by four grid and these have a two by two grid, okay? So, um, so let's just see what other options one could do. And for the very simplest one, you also don't need a compass, okay? But, um, but for, some, for some you will, you will need a compass. So depending on what section you choose, uh, and I, I'll explain which ones will. Um, so, Another rule, so this first rule is you start here and you can only go to one, two, three. Second rule, let's call it A, B. Second rule or a second variation would be you start in the middle and then you can go to any of the points, okay? Now the third one could be that you start there, but you also go to lines that are not drawn. In other words, they're neither a diagonal nor a median. And so that could be, for example, that I could go there, and maybe I could go there, right? Or I could go maybe there and maybe go over here. And right away, you'll see there's a lot more combinations. Um, so for example, I could do this, I could do this, and then maybe I can go there, okay? So that's a little more freedom there. Now, some sections, even though they're possible to draw, might not be feasible in terms of making the cube. So for example, if I did this, and then I did that, and then I did this, um, I'm gonna guess that you would have a tough time making the cube actually fit um, because you would have what's called um, undercuts. Uh, it's kind of like in ceramics, when you have a mold, you have to be able to take the mold out. So you have to design the piece in such a way that that's possible. Okay. Um, anyway, so the first assignment, which is number 16, is really to do a bunch of sketches. And I'll have a separate one on a two by two grid and one on a four by four grid. Okay. Um, just for completeness, let me just show you how once you pick that, 
the next step will be to do a drawing that shows how we carry this section around the cube, okay? And to do that, yeah, we do this. We, we take our section and we mirror it, right? This is the mirror image of that. And then we take the whole thing and we flip it. And I'll show this now in the, in the uh, with a piece of tracing paper. So you should have tracing paper. Um, because it's super, super useful. And what I might do is um, just draw it like this. Okay, that's my section. So now what I wanna do is mirror image and a mirror image, see if I find my mirror somewhere. Sorry, it has a, a cross, um, is basically that, right? So you can see that's a mirror image of my design or specular symmetry um, or also bilateral symmetry. So now I'm just, I'm just kind of eyeball it and see if I can replicate it. Um, it would be here and then it would go there and then it would go there like that. Okay, so that's the first step. The next step is to take this entire thing and rotate it uh, 180. And I'm actually going to take a little, another piece of tracing paper so I don't want to cut. Shoot. So this is very important that we do this process at the beginning because it's going to. Uh... Okay, did the focus go out of focus? No. This is the trace, right? Okay. Um, so now we take this entire design. It up a little bit. So we had our design. We mirror it. We got that. We take this entire design and I'm going to draw it a little better now here. Tracing paper is amazing because all you have to do is just lift it up and it's just like opacity in Photoshop, except it's instant. Um, okay. All right, once I have that, then I take this whole thing and I rotate it over 180, which is the same as saying that I could flip this once and flip it twice and I would get the design that I'm looking for, okay? Let me just show you how I do it by instead rotating 180 around this spot. Oh, keep that. So that's my point, and I want to flip it over like that or rotate it like that. Okay, and this will be our design. Hmm. Okay, the reason we started in the center here was because we want to end up in the center over there so that we make an easier connection, although that rule could be broken too. Um, maybe in the one that has a two by two grid. Okay. So that's the process. And then to this design, we would add a square maybe here and a square maybe here. And we would have two pieces that are exactly the same. So this would be one half of our cube. And this would be the other over here, okay? So I'm just gonna repeat now the process for um, for a two by two, let's see what happens. It really is the same, exactly the same thing. Um, so if we took that initial design, 
And now this is such a simple design that I think I can do it without having to use tracing paper twice. So if this is my design, and by the way, in general, I'd rather you not repeat the ones, the examples that I show in the videos, but um, in a bind, you could like, it, it's not as challenging, um, but what you probably don't wanna do is trace anything, right? You do wanna reconstruct them, even if it's the same design. And I might have this rule that you have to like flip it left to right or something. So it's, so you do some work, okay? Um, Okay, so if this is our initial design, we mirror this. And I know now that because it's so simple, I can figure this out. I'm gonna mirror it. Okay. And now I take this whole thing and I just flip it over here, pointing here. And I just know again that because, because it's a simple design, it's gonna look like that. Okay, so again, here we would add a square maybe at the bottom here and a square here, which now I can't, I can't show. Um, and that would be one half. Um, and notice that actually, if you end up doing this design, um, when we built this thing, some pieces would be loose, right? So let's see the top part here. Ah. So what we can do instead of having this piece dangling here, sort of lonely, what we can do is move over this guy right here and change it so that it becomes like that. Okay, so that would be the same, um, the same design. Okay, so that's that's kind of it. Um, you'll have the um, for number sixteen. You'll have these grids. Uh, or you could sketch your own grids. And, um, and then number 17, um, yeah, will be the outside pattern. So that drawing will look, um, actually I need to keep my stack always the same because that way I don't lose focus. <laughs> um, so yeah, number, Number 17, and again, 17 will be the two by two grid and 17A will be the four by four grid if you choose to go that route. Um, number 17 is gonna be a drawing and that's gonna look like this. And I already have, um, already have videos on this. Okay, so on the, on the left, you'll have your four by four design. So let's assume it's this design like that. Okay, and then on the right, you'll have a quarter scale drawing of, again, your design, but reduced, right? Something like this and, the, and it will fit nicely. Um, this is four by four, this is one inch. So actually I'm drawing it a little bit too big here now. Um, it would be a little lower here. Uh, and then, so this would be our design. Okay. And it might have, you know, nicely drawn grid, very simple like that. Okay. So that's the same, so Two by two grid would be 17, the number. And four by four grid, which would be a more complex design, um, would be uh, number 17A. And I'm just gonna double check to make sure. Yeah, with what's called the external pattern. Okay, mind you, you could have, the more elaborate grid and still do this design, right? I mean, it's a little silly, but you could, um, but why, right? If you, if you don't need that grid, just use this grid, right? Um, and um, yeah, so I forget what the design was here that I did before. I think it was something like that. 
Okay. Um, then the next thing will be to um, yes. So the next drawing will be actually a drawing that will allow everyone really uh, to find all the information um, that we need for these pieces inside. Okay. Um, and for, for this grid, of course, there is more, more information. Um, but the, that drawing, which will be 18, yeah, 18, which will be distances from the center. So 18 and 18A will be distances. So this was um, external. surface okay. and then this will be distances from the center because we need that information in order to build our parts they're really all triangles um, inside okay we just have to figure out a bunch of triangles that go from the lines on the outside to the middle and sometimes those triangle join to make one single shape like in this case like a a diamond, okay? But that's secondary, we'll deal with that later. Um, so for that, what we need to do for the two by two grid, okay? Well, for both, okay? For both, the drawing will look uh, like this. You'll have a square in the corner here. And then you will um, do a section, and this will be four inches. This will be four inches, so that um, let's see. In order to figure out how far these spots are on the edge, for example, or on this line, meaning. Anything that goes here, here, here will be on the edge. Anything that's on this line will be in the middle. Um, what we can do is we can cut the cube, of course, in half, and we get exactly the same thing that we would see if we were looking at it from the face. So that's not that hard. Uh, but this is a little more tricky where we cut the cube in half this way, and we look at what's inside there, right? And so to do that, we construct this drawing this way. We look at the cube from the top, we cut it in half, and then we make this, uh, this view. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the simple one, okay? Um, and this would be section AA. Okay, so this stays at four and this, whatever, this is, if this was one, if this were one, this would be square root of two, but, um, and so for the simple grid, for the two by two grid, you won't need a compass because actually if you stick to these lines, okay, to any of these lines, notice that they really repeat, right? So once you figure that, you figure all the other three. And once you figure that, you've also figured the other three. So that means it's the same inside. Once we, once we determine this pattern, um, which I did here in a separate piece, um, and this pattern, which is this guy, okay. Basically, again, you, you can see this is really the same triangle, just repeated and flipped and mirrored, et cetera. And here too, right? It's just the same triangle repeated. So with those two triangles, you can build the entire cube inside if you do a section that's just based on this, on this pattern, okay? If you, don't, if you don't do anything else, like cross this way here. Um, so that's the good news because once you draw this, once you draw this, um, you can actually take, I don't have it here now handy, but you can take a push pin, okay? And with a push pin, you can transfer this information onto another board and then you can cut it, all right? 
So that's for the simple section. If you had the more complex section, then things get a little more tricky because, and I'm just gonna go over it now, okay? So these would be eight, 18, just simple like that. Maybe I'll use a different color. Yeah, I'll use red now. So I'll make 18A red. Um, so it would be the same drawing, but it would be a, another step. Um, and that step would be that if I have the four by four grid, right? Now I have more information that I need to figure out. I have these spots that I don't know where they would end up um, in the middle of the cube. And I also have these spots, okay? So my section would be more complex in that I would also be projecting um, Yeah, I would be projecting more lines. And let's see now, I have to make, I have to be careful because actually this is wrong. Um, okay, so this spot is right there. Yeah, that's the other, the other spot that's important. So it's really just this, sorry. Erase what I don't need. Um, what, I, what I was trying to show is that there is this spot here, X, which is not in the center, but in the center of the other square, that to find out how far that is from, um, from the center of the cube, Here's how I figured it out. I realized that actually, if I look at this face of the cube, axis also lies on that diagonal. So the lines here that I need are gonna be these lines. Okay, and there's more details in the other video, but um, so for 18A, um, you would have, this, everything is gonna have a letter. So um, yeah, okay, and uh, yeah, I forgot I should mention that. So the the grid in our cube, so that we keep track of things. Is gonna have um, it's gonna have letters, okay? And these are not all of them, but we're gonna stick to the same letters for the people who do the two by two grid and the people that do the four by four grid. So we can also use materials from one or the other. Um, there are some tools that can be shared, um, and so those letters are gonna be these letters. Okay, and because four by four is the older version. So A, B, and C, like that. Um, I guess I should make them in red, oh, that's okay. And then this is gonna be X because it was added later. Um, and then on the edge here, it's gonna be D and E, okay? And now the rest are gonna repeat, right? This is gonna be another B, this is gonna be another B, these are gonna be all X's, these are C's, these are all D's, and these are all E's, okay? So that looks complicated now, but um, again, you just have to remember that you have A, B, C, D, E, and then X if you do the four by four grid. Um, on the other hand, for those that do the two by two grid, we just need same thing, but uh, let's see, let me do it here so it's more visible. Um, we're just gonna need A, C. Again, we're gonna stick to, this is another C. And then the only other letter that we need is E, right? Okay. 
two by two and four by four. Um, and so because actually this information is in many other videos, I'm now gonna do a physical example of how this world is gonna help us and especially for the two by two grid. Um, so this will allow us to, let's see, I have to make sure I look at the thing here. So let's just see. Let's just see. Yeah, this would be A. And then this is A, B, and C. We find it in both drawings. So um, even though this works as a uh, is a top view of our cube right here. It's also basically, um, it could be also this section, right? That one. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just go because I'm a little, I'm, I'm sort of concerned a little bit more for those who will do the simple grid because this is new. And so I wanna make sure it's clear. So what I did, I actually built one. Um, maybe I need a little more contrast. There we go. Um, so this was our design, if you recall, right? And this is how we would build it, right? We have to cut it. I'm not gonna go through the process now, but so we would need four squares cut with the same cut, right? Uh, but they get arranged slightly different, right? Now I'm gonna go off the frame here, but that's okay. And this, if you recall, again, it was like this, but then we flipped it and it ends up being right here, right? like that okay and then we would have two squares right that would eventually attach right it doesn't really matter where as long as they are one you know on opposite sides so actually why don't i quickly uh, join these together because um the building of the model actually calls for just making a so-called rough even though it should be still precise it's rough only because I'm saying that, um, oops, sorry, what we're doing here is actually just making these parts leave a little gap because it's gonna go around. Um, so there is an option to do a fancy one, like uh, really well finished, if I can find one. Um, for example, like this with glue and tabs. Okay, can you see the tabs? Um, so that's optional. But the one that I'm calling rough that has the scotch tape still needs to be fairly precise. Otherwise, uh, okay, so now if you recall, I can shift this and bring it over to this side. Again, leave a little gap. Because as I bend it, it's gonna need a little room. Um, and that would be, um, and now I'm gonna attach the, um, one, of the, one of the squares, just a tiny gap. Okay, so that's one pattern, right? Now I know the other one is exactly the same. So I just, oh, actually I made myself some marks earlier and I don't know if I kept them. Um, yeah, some little markings to make sure that I think I've lost them, but anyway. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I mix them up. All right, doesn't matter. It's fairly precise. Um, 
possible. But if you if you keep the exact cut and you make sure that eventually they'll join back together, it's it's more precise. But I didn't do that. I, I rushed a little bit. The marks I made were like this, right? So what I what I did a little mark there so that I knew that part belonged together. Um, okay, this one is like that. Well, this mark does fit. Well, maybe they will all come back together once I. Once I glue it all together, perhaps the markings will fall back together. Mm. And there's techniques to glue it if we were doing this with the final version in glue, but uh, for scotch tape, it's just you just have to use scotch tape. It's not, not a special or very fancy thing. Um, okay, and I'm just now Connected. So you can see that the parts are exactly the same. So that's the idea, right? Everything outside, everything inside, the volume, the area, everything is going to be exactly the same. Um, and again, it's going to be right-handed. Both are right-handed. So it's kind of like, okay, I can take this hand and overlap it and it fits. I cannot really do it because we have right hand and left hand, but this would you would call both right-handed. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, connect it now, just to show you that. Oh, actually, um, yeah, let me do that. We still need to do the inside, of course. And there is a, a more complicated process to do it with the compass. Um, but in this particular design, again, we don't need to use the compass because we have determined that our shapes are fairly simple and they repeat. Okay, come on. Um, so that's one. Now I'm gonna take the other one. So this is actually making the actual cube is number, um, yeah, it's number 21 um, because 19 and 20 are gonna allow us to figure out what that inside is. And again, the simplest version for this particular one or any design, which, which there are not that many, they use uh, just a simple pattern or only the lines again that fall in that two by two grid. Um, um, are gonna be pieces out of this, right? For the inside. So what I can do is actually, <laughs> I could sort of play around and see, okay, which one fits? I made myself a bunch of these guys from this design and a bunch of this guy, actually that belongs there too for this design, okay? So let's try it. We need to go to the center, okay? So we can just see, and I have to do this now. I know the design a little bit. So I would go and was like, oh, that looks like it could work. It looks like it sort of fits. So perhaps two of these go together like this. Um, and then I'm gonna test it and see if that works out. It's a corner. It actually looks pretty good. So this would fit there. Now on the opposite end, notice that one is high and one is low. On the opposite end, it's the same shape, except we flip it. So this is a mountain and we're gonna use it as a valley over here, I think. 
sorry, like that. Okay, so I already know that, oh great, I can make myself one, two, and then for the other one, two more. So I need four of these to do this spiky part. Um, so I'm just going to make them, they're really like kites. Um, very simple. And again, if someone wants to do this design, I'll accept it as long as you go through all the steps, okay? But perhaps you wanna be challenged a little more, and do something a little more elaborate, okay? Um, uh, bad cut there, yeah, I cut one that wasn't so perfect. Um, Okay, so right now I'm going through, again, the rough cube, which is actually I'm jumping to number 21. So number 21 is the rough cube. Um, with more elaborate designs, it makes sense to do the the inside surface kind of all at once, um, meaning without doing every single triangle by itself. Um, so I'm just gonna attach them now since I know they, they belong. Well, actually I don't know, I shouldn't jump ahead. I know because I've done this many times, but you will know if it's, if it's, if it's working or not uh, because the cube will become crooked and a little kind of push and pull. Should be looking at the screen once in a while to see what's, what's actually showing on the video. <laughs> um, so. Okay, so that's our mountain right there. And down below it's gonna be our valley. So, uh, no, that's the wrong one. Yep. So, a little patience with this stuff. I mean, you know, the more tape you put, the um, more stable it will be, but. Um, there we go. So that tells me that it's, it's looking pretty good actually because the cube is kind of straight. Now, notice that here, what I can put is, you know, more triangles, oops, stay there. Um, more triangles, but because, because they're part of this section right here, which wraps around the corner like that, the two triangles really belong to the same, to the same square, okay? So I could, what I could do is just put a single square there. So I'll put both just to show you that, you know, they're the same thing. Um, and, um, and this will happen also in the more complex sections where you'll find, um, you'll find triangles again that belong to the same plane, right? And so we can connect them together um, to, to make the design a little better, you know, a little more efficient. So, like that. And if the cube doesn't, again, bulge or push or pull, then you're good, right? Um, it actually sometimes helps to leave the bottom open because then you can get your hands inside when you're building it. Um, see, right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of space to put my fingers and I'm gonna have to kind of press from the outside. Okay, come on. There we go. Rushing a little bit, but um, this is the idea.
All right, it's not perfect there. Um, Cause I, what did I do? Oh yeah, cause I pushed it too much. It's scotch tape, so you can really even rip it, right? Um, here's the trick, make sure that corner is aligned and then you can bend it like that. Yeah, still doesn't want to be perfect because there's some other. So I'll just I'll just leave it alone for now there. Okay, but that's our piece. All right. Um, and uh, I'm not going to do the other one now for just for the video, just for the time. But but you can see, well, you can see the design is the same. So no matter how I turn them, so the top the tall part will fit in the in the short part, the spiky part will fit, you know, the mountain will fit in the valley like that. Okay. And um, yeah, so that will be the rough cube. Um, so let's try to wrap it up perhaps. Um, Oh yeah, we do the sketches. And again, this could be, you know, the simple one or the more complicated one. Okay, we, we out of a, a particular design. Um, then uh, 17 is the drawing. So this is 16. 17 is the drawing that looks like this with the big, big design right there. And the little guys here to show the pattern. Right, like that. Uh, then eighteen is going to be the um, the cross section that is going to give us the uh, information that we need for the inside. And again, depending on whether you have the simple grid or the more complicated grid, it's going to have uh, different information. Um, then 19 will be determining what that is, the inside pattern, okay? So 19 would be a drawing that shows actually this. If I take this apart now, um, yeah, this is good. Uh, let's see. Well, it's the same, right? We need these two pieces and we need these two pieces and then it repeats on the other side. So at the minimum, you would have half of it. Um, and if you look at it, it's basically this guy and this and one square, right? So 19 would be um, be these two triangles connected to those triangles. So it would be like this, basically. And that's a drawing, but it's also your master template so that you can, you can, uh, you know, do then all your designs. We're going to be using that drawing as a cookie cutter to make, to make all the parts. Okay. So there you go. That's, that's how that fits. Right. And you see how it also fits on the other side. It just folds slightly different. Right. So that's your basic design what I'm calling the um, internal pattern, okay? Pattern. And we wanted to show it attached to one of the faces so that we know the relationship. So let's see if I had, oops. Um, if I took this apart again, Oh, I'm, I'm now opening it in a different way. It doesn't matter. Um, this is actually one other way of doing it to attach all the pieces to the square at the beginning. Um, but for this particular drawing for 19, what you would need to show is you need to show this connected to this in a logical manner. 
right? So here, it's like that. So if this is like this, it means that this is attached here. But when I show it, you see that it overlaps, right? So that's not very nice. However, if I, if I pivot this, that also overlaps. So in this case, none of this, um, I'm trying to find the spot. Oh, there you go. That's it. So I can actually, I can actually attach it in my drawing, show it like this. Right? So this is my inside pattern, and this is my outside, and this is a correct relationship. Is it? Actually, now I'm thinking, uh, all right, because here it will attach to the other one from the other side. I'm not so sure, actually. Let's just, let's just double check. <laughs> um, so that goes like that. And this does not connect. So this is actually not right. Um, yeah, so it's actually not possible to attach it here. It would always overlap. But let's see if it's possible to attach it to another part. If I attach it here, that would work. Another option would be to um, to just have it shown, but like kind of separate like this, dangling like that, okay? Um, anyway, I'll have another drawing. I, I, I'll show it better how we can actually, um, Yeah, because if this was separate, let's see, like that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's hard to make it connect. Um, so what did we decide that it would be, it would connect if it was like this. Yeah, we could connect it perhaps like that. Anyway, that drawing will look something like a piece of your cube and then um, the part that connects to it. And we just decided that it wouldn't, it would overlap. So we're gonna do ours like this. It's not very clear, but there is a special drawing there's a special video for this as well. So that's showing the design. And then um, 20 will be the full pattern. So 20 will be, um, basically this design. And then attached to this also um, what we just described, right? And we just said that it would be connected. Um, let's see, like that. Yeah, so this would be here. In this particular case, this would be here. All right, so this is gonna be actually a large drawing. This is gonna be 11 by 17. So you're gonna to have to tape maybe two sheets to get it. Um, so this is the full, this is 20, uh, what do I call it? Full pattern. Okay, then we have the rough cube, which is number 20. Um, Sorry, 21 is the rough cube and then the refined if you wanna do it. And then we'll do two last drawings, which are um, a, uh, 
isometric views or axonometric rather of the cube. So let's see if I can quickly sketch it. Um, yeah. So let's see. It might be something that looks like that. No, that's not good. All I have to do is just look at this and draw it. And it might just look like that. So the center would be there. Or if it was positioned like this, it would look slightly different. So, um, yeah, 20, 22 will be two views of your cube. Okay. Um, with a cutout. And then 20, so this would be 23. So 21 and 22 are rough and refined. Sorry, I'm rushing now because I know this video is getting too long. Um, and then 23 is the two views and 24 is actually an exploded view uh, where one part is gonna look like it fits into the other like that. Okay. Um, so, Again, the first assignment is to um, do the little sketches, okay? Because we need to decide what your design is gonna be like, right? So I will, um, I'll put the, uh, you know, just some basically a grid, you know, a grid pattern in iLearn and you can experiment, okay? And for those of you who want to do the, um, or elaborate one, the four by four. Um, oh, and the last thing I should add is that there's also in this particular segment in this um, project, there's also an extra credit one that is that if you wanted to split it into three parts, um, you could do that with the same information. Okay, I'm going to show you this one. This is actually a simple section, and this is in my uh, professor's, in my teacher's book, which I'll also show you. Um, this was the section, and I repeated it just like the pattern that we did. And so this is actually half of a cube, right? Um, however, with that same information, you can make, um, you can make, uh, now I don't have three altogether, but you can make, three out of it, three. In other words, don't, um, instead of having a, a filled square, if you actually make these sections on all the squares, then you come up with three parts because you've got six faces so divided by three, uh, two faces for each part. So you can see that's one face and that's another face. And this is a little 3D printed model that's hinged with a fishing line actually. Um, It's pretty neat. It's like a little switch. Um, and this is what my teacher did. Um, he actually put together a bunch of these thirds and he made it into this chain that can turn into a cube, actually. Um, and just to finish with that, um, online you'll find his book. It's in Italian, but it's also in English because I translated it. And in it, there is some of these steps that I just went through. So if you want it, you could actually follow um, the steps. This is in particular for the third, for the three, th three modules. Um, and this is in English, my rough translation, okay? But it's pretty good, it's okay, it's enough. Um, so, and I went ahead and made a copy of his model, actually again, out of uh, 3D printed parts that are hinged um, and I'm gonna pause for a moment. I know the video is very long, but 
the cool thing about this process is that you could in theory make something like this with your own design um, because it might work. Uh, some sections might not, but some will. Uh, and just to finish that, that thought, um, I will show you an old design from a student who started out with this particular section. Um, and this was half, right? So made two cubes exactly. So that's split into two halves. Now, what happens when you take the same section and you split it into three times? Okay. So this was now, instead of leaving the bottom and the top solid, what happens if we apply that section also to those parts? And there is a different way of arranging it, but you can, and this is what happens. You can do that, and now you have three parts. So these pieces are the same pieces that we find here, okay? They're exactly the same pieces, just arranged uh, differently. Um, yeah, because even this line that you see here, let's see, and that line, yeah, they're already present here. They're just different, different arrangement. Um, and the trick again is that the three pieces are exactly identical. So when you lay them down, they have to be exactly the same, right? So now what happens if you keep splitting? Now, this is probably enough. Um, and these we couldn't hinge them together. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to open it, right? But if you leave one out, look at what can happen. See how that goes inside the other? So even though this, this section is more complicated than this section, right? On my teacher's model, you can see that you use the diagonal as the hinge. Um, and the two parts can rotate inside one another. So we, she didn't do this, like she could have maybe made something with this, but instead <laughs> she actually went ahead and did six pieces. Okay. So again, it's, oops, it's the same cut, but now all of a sudden we have what have we done? We've actually taken one of this. And let's see if I can find the right and split it in a half. Let's just take two. Yeah, there we go. It's easier if you lay them down. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I should move the camera now. It's okay. Yeah, there we go. Now I can show you that how this was split, right? Like that. So now from that, which was a third, we have now six. And then she even went a step further and hinged them all together. And this actually falls back inside itself. Sorry, I don't wanna, I guess since it's the end of the video, I can, I can just go up a little bit. Okay, so anyway, it's a very interesting process. You start out with very basic shapes. Um, let's see, it's not opening. Oh my, there we go. And this was actually one out of six. So there was like, I think 24 pieces that folded back together. Um, so if you're curious and you wanted to play around with it. All right. We just leave this here. Lift the little guy to show on top. Okay. So thank you, and I'll see you for the next video.